Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and today we are carrying on our story of Hannibal and the Punic Wars against the Romans and we're going to see what happened uh, to Hannibal after the death of his brother. You remember last time we saw poor old uh, Hasdrubal's head flying over the wall of uh, Hannibal's camp uh, which didn't sort of boost his morale any too greatly. Uh, so now we're going to see what, uh, what happened. The first thing to say is life was not made any easier for Hannibal uh, as he kind of continued to wander around Italy when news came through from Spain uh, that his troops back in Spain had suffered yet another defeat uh, to the Roman general Scipio at the Battle of Ilippa in 206 BC. Scipio was pretty buoyed up by this success uh, and he decided to uh, cross over from Spain to North Africa to go and actually attack Carthage itself. His first great success when he got over to Africa was to persuade the incredible leader of the Numidian forces, uh, Massinissa, to defect and fight for the Romans. Massinissa agreed to do so and his very first action on behalf of the Romans was to attack the Numidian king. You know, I mean, talk about, you know, really sort of grabbing your treachery by the throat and, and running with it. Uh, so he attacks his own king, uh, King Syphax, and capture the capital city, Serta. There he found the king's rather beautiful daughter, Sophonisba, who begged him not to hand him over to the Romans. So Mas Masinisba said, well, OK, I won't hand you over to the Romans. I'll keep you safe, my dear. Indeed, I'll marry you. So the girl thought, OK, well, fair enough. I suppose that's one way of keeping safe and agreed to be married. Now, Scipio was not very happy with that. He thought, you know, it's a bit of a dodgy alliance uh, for my kind of top general to marry the daughter of our enemy our enemy king. Uh, and so he said, look, I'm sorry, Masinissi, you're not going to be allowed to keep this bride. Um, you know, it was a great idea, good for the history books, but no, that's not going to work. So the poor girl was um, told she was going to have to take poison uh, and end her life, which she wanted to do rather than fall into the hands of the Romans. Uh, so uh, another grim end for a, a lady in the you know ancient world. Not a great time really for anyone actually. Scipio then advanced uh, onwards towards Carthage, uh, and a truce was agreed with the Carthaginians. Meanwhile, Hannibal came back with his rather bedraggled army from Italy to see if he could uh, you know prop things up back home. Now, when the Carthaginians heard that Hannibal was back on dry land, uh, they, of course, broke the truce, and uh, Scipio and Massinissa withdrew away from the city of Carthage uh, and advanced to meet Hannibal uh, at a place called Zama. Scipio and Hannibal had a meeting. They tried to arrange terms, uh, couldn't agree on anything, and so the inevitable battle occurred. Now Hannibal began in typical kind of Hannibal style by drawing up 80 elephants in his front line um, and I'm sure it would have been a great idea other than the fact that when the Romans blew their trumpets to announce you know the advance the Carthaginian elephants panicked <laughs> and reversed back into their own troops and flattened you know huge swathe of the Carthaginian army. So not a great start. The elephants who hadn't panicked then advanced towards the Romans, but again, you know, the Romans then charged at them and the, Rome, and the elephants thought, no, no, this isn't good. So they turned tail and they also fled back towards their own men, causing, you know, further mayhem. As in all good war stories, the Carthaginians then ended up surrounded, you know, with Romans in front of them and Romans behind them. Uh, and uh, the inevitable defeat occurred. So uh, terms were drawn up. Hannibal agreed um, with Scipio that 
Carthage would not be sacked, you know, destroyed, uh, but in return the Carthaginians would give uh, hostages and money uh, to the Romans. And Scipio, very pleased with himself, uh, went back to Italy uh, and marched into Rome to receive a triumph. You know, well done, Scipio. Poor old Hannibal was left with the rather ignominious task of supervising the payments of money to Rome, which, of course, he didn't much enjoy. Uh, very depressing and demoralising. Uh, and he did it for a bit, but then... Again, Hannibal, you know, he couldn't help himself. He ended up, you know, making friends with the king of Syria, um, an enemy of Rome, and the Romans didn't like that. So, you know, again, Hannibal found himself uh, chief enemy of the Roman people. He was forced to flee from Carthage. Uh, he went, first of all, to Crete, and then from there on to Bithynia, where he helped a guy called King Prusias in his war against King Eumenes of Pergamum. You know, a lot of stuff, going, a lot of politics in the uh, ancient world. Hannibal, you know, acquired a bit of a reputation for himself uh, during this little war um, by hurling jars containing snakes onto the enemy ships, which, you know, scared the sailors rigid and, you know, caused utter chaos. But, you know, he was really sort of uh, running down the clock, so to speak, because the Romans were on his case. And when they came looking for him, he thought, no, no, I, I really, really don't want to fall into Roman hands. You know, it's been a good, it's been a good career so far, trying to beat Rome. I haven't managed, and I'm damned if I'm going to be captured by them. So, uh, you know, he took poison rather than fall into the hands of the enemy, and that was the end of Hannibal. And that was the end of Dido's curse, was it? Well, we will see next time whether there's any life left in the Carthaginian enemy that rose up out of the ashes of Queen Dido all those years ago to seek revenge on the treacherous Aeneas who had left her to go off and find Rome. Uh, so look out for that next time. Uh, do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and I'll see you back on this channel very soon.